Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about the inverse trig functions. In the previous video, I talked about the trig functions and I introduced the definitions. Trig functions only work when you're dealing with a right triangle, which means one of the angles is 90 degrees. So if we define our angle as theta and then define our sides of our triangle in relation to theta, this is the adjacent side to that angle. This is the opposite side to that angle. And the side opposite the 90 degree angle is always called the hypotenuse. So there's different ratios of the sides. There's actually three different ratios that we talked about, sine, cosine, and tangent. And sine is defined as the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. Cosine is defined as the ratio of the length of this side, the adjacent side, to the length of the hypotenuse. And tangent is defined as the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the length of the adjacent side. Our calculators have the sine, cosine, and tangent function on it, so we were able to find trig functions for various angles. In this video, we're not going to know the angle. Instead, we're going to know two sides and we're going to be asked to find the angle. And in order to do that, we need to use these functions. Sine to the negative one, cos to the negative one, tangent to the negative one. You will find those functions above these functions, so they will be the second or the inverse function of these functions. So depending on the calculator you use, you'll have to press inverse sine to get sine to the negative one, or second sine to get sine to the negative one, and so on. So let's start off with doing some examples on using the calculator function, and then we will progress to finding angles in our right triangles. In the previous video, we knew the angle and we were finding the ratio. Now, we're going to know the ratio and we're finding the angle. So the sine of some angle is equal to 0 0.5. In order to isolate theta, we're going to do the inverse sine function to both sides of the equation. We're going to rewrite this as theta equals inverse sine of 0 0.5. Okay. These two statements are saying the same thing, it's just writing it in a different way. Now one thing that can cause confusion is the notation that's used, because you may or may not remember learning that if you saw anything to the negative one, it meant one over that. That's true for variables, but when you're dealing with functions and you see a negative one exponent, it does not mean this. Sine to the negative one does not mean one over sine. So those of you that have the Texas Instrument XA30, you're going to do it one way. You're going to enter the 0 0.5 and then you're going to press your inverse sine function. Uh, for different calculators, you might have to press the inverse sine function first and then 0 0.5. So try it on your calculator to see what works for you. You should get a value of 30 degrees. Let's try this next example. If we know the ratio of some angle, the cos ratio, is 0 0.6 and we want to find that angle, the way that we find that angle is we're going to take the inverse cos of 0 0.6. So again, on your calculator, you're going to use your second function and cos or your inverse function and cos. The order depends on which calculator you have. You're either going to enter this first and then the ratio or the ratio and then the function. You should get 53.13, I'll round it off to the nearest tenth degrees. If you're interested in changing your angle to degrees, minutes, seconds, I did put a video out showing you how to do that. I'm going to just leave my answer in decimal form, but if you do need to change from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds, take a look at that video. One last example, this time with the tangent function. Again, we don't know our angle, so we're not finding the tangent of 1.45. The tangent ratio is equal to 1.45. In order to find the angle, I'm going to take the inverse tan of 1.45. And you should get an angle of 55.4 degrees. If you're good with this, let's proceed to right triangles. In our first right triangle, we don't know the angle, but we know this side is 15 centimeters and this side is 20 centimeters. 
So what I'm going to do is label those sides in relation to this angle so that I know what trig function I need to use. So this is the side opposite. And because this side is across from the 90 degree angle, it's the hypotenuse. So the trig function that talks about the ratio of opposite and hypotenuse is the sine function. So I know the sine of my angle will be equal to 15 divided by 20. Therefore, theta will equal the inverse sine of 15 divided by 20. So depending on which calculator you have, if, as I mentioned, you have the Texas Instrument XA30, you can take 15 and divide by 20 and then find inverse sine. If your calculator requires you to do the function first, what you want to do is go inverse sine and then bracket 15 divided by 20, end of bracket. If you don't use the brackets, you won't get the right answer. You might ask, can you change this to a decimal first? You can, but if it doesn't work out to a nice decimal, then it's probably not the best method because you don't want to write it down and then punch it back in and it's not going to be accurate anyway because you've rounded it off. So my recommendation is just to use the bracket and write this as 15 divided by 20. Try it on your calculator. You should get 48.6 degrees. Now you could check this by taking the sine of 48.6 degrees and seeing if it's equivalent to what this ratio is. And this ratio is 0.75. So if you try it, sine of 48.6 degrees, you should get very close to 0.75. It might not be exact because I've rounded the angle off. Let's take a look at a few more examples. In our next example, we have a right triangle. This is the hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. And we have this length here, and we're trying to find this angle. So let's define this side in relation to this angle. This side would be adjacent to that angle. So this is the adjacent side. The trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine function. So cosine of my angle will be equal to the adjacent side, which is 10, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. In order to solve for theta, I'm going to take the inverse cos of 10 divided by 12. So again, either 10 divided by 12 and then press inverse cos, or inverse cos bracket 10 divided by 12, end of bracket. You should get 33.6 degrees when I round that off. Again, you can check, find the cos of 33.6 degrees and see if it's equal to the same ratio as 10 divided by 12 as a decimal. Let's try an example with the tangent function. In our next example, we have a right triangle. Again, we don't know the angle and we know these two sides. We do not know the hypotenuse. This side, which is across from or opposite than our angle, is the opposite side. And this side is the adjacent side. So the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is the tangent function. So the tangent of theta will equal the opposite, which is 100, divided by the adjacent, which is 180. Therefore, theta will equal the inverse tan of 100 divided by 180. If you want to simplify that before pun punching it into your calculator, that's fine. This reduces to 10 over 18, which reduces to 5 over 9. So that's perfectly acceptable. And now we're going to find the inverse tan of that value, and you should get 29.1 degrees. So that's how you're going to find the angle when you know two sides. Name the sides in relation to your angle. Determine which two sides you're dealing with. Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Once you know the two sides you're working with, then you'll know what trig function to use. Set up your trig function, isolate your angle by going to the inverse trig function and calculating. One thing I want to mention, because it might be an issue for you, is the mode for the angles. The default mode for your calculator will be the degree mode. So on your display, you'll either see nothing 
or you'll see a little D, or you might see a little DEG. And that's what it needs to be when you're doing these questions because you're working with your angle in degrees. But there are two other ways that angles are measured. One is radians and the other is gradients. And if you start playing around with the mode function or your DRG button, you, you might get into radians or gradients. So if you ever see an R or an RAD or a G or a GRAD on your display and you're working with your trig functions or your inverse trig functions, you're going to have an issue because these are angles measured in different units. Look up how to get out of that mode for your calculator. You probably will either have a DRG button or you'll have a mode button and with the mode you'll probably have a list of what you can change to. So just be aware of that. If you're having problems, it might be because you accidentally got into radians or gradients. But if you have a D, a D, E, G, or nothing at all showing up on the display, it means you're in degree mode. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to do examples of where you're going to be using trig functions and inverse trig functions in the trades. So practice just with these types of questions first, and then we'll make it a little more interesting.